Hello VFX community. Today I'm gonna show you how I created this. Oops, I already died. How I created this cool hammer smear effect. So yeah, I mainly used Houdini, so that's the only thing you'll need. Otherwise, this is quite easy to do. So let me show you. First of all, in Houdini, I imported my skeletal mesh, and that's our bad boy. And then we remove the parts we don't need. So in this case, we only need the hammer. And then what I want to do is transform back this piece to the center by undoing the bone transforms. And how do we do that? Well, simply with an attribute wrangle here on the animated pose, I basically undo the transforms. And now if I bone deform this, it now brings it back to the center. So now when we attach the effect, it will perfectly be aligned to the socket or actually the joint without having you like to eyeball this thing. Then I applied some scale, but, but it's really not necessary just because I had some fixed values and then I was too lazy. And then, you know, because I'm, I'm doing a remesh, it's using voxels and I was too lazy to then adjust these values. So anyways, I just scale it up by 15. And then in the very end, I scale it down, I'd say one divided by 15. So times this, you know, so it's back to its original scale, you can tell. Anyways, I do quick remesh. Of course, I'm going to need it if I want a cool smearing effect. And then what I do is I group these points so that I can colorize them and use that as yeah, a, a multiplier to, to, to cancel out the effects on the borders. So that's already going in my color. And then I have a point VOP which is basically a noise. But of course, a noise in Houdini doesn't tile. So I had to kind of blend in another noise. And you'll you'll see that here on these parameters. I'm basically panning my first noise. So you can see it going from zero to minus one because it has to uh, pan downwards. Yeah, you can, as you can tell. But of course, that other one's then blending in over time. And that I do then with a lerp here in this function. So I'm basically lerping from zero to one and then I'm lerping both. And yeah, that's that's mainly that when it comes to that. And then of course there are some more values that I'm calculating. So I, I, I basically keep only the red channel and I feed it into the, the color. And then I make sure that I keep the boundaries, the mask that I created as the, the blue channel, you can tell. And then I'm basically lerping the R and the G pretty simple but of course I need one more mask that is like a linear mask so that the smearing is more st like stronger on that side and softer on that side so after I I, I kind of lerped already so here I lerped and I don't need the G channel anymore so I, I use the G channel to then like based on the bounce so the x-axis like you can tell the x-axis is basically this axis I then create that mask and then yeah, I'm, I'm smearing it with a simple rotation. So you can simply copy this. I'm not going to go in depth over this thing. And then I recalculate the normals. And then I make sure that the scale is back to where it should be, like so. And then, yeah, this is then exported. Pop, 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 pop. And that's nothing, like so. And then, yeah, I simply import this. Oops. Da, 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 into my project. Of course, the way you set it up, I'm not going to go over it. It's just a little showcase on how I did it. Although I can show you real quick. Oh, actually, no. Before I go, go into Unreal Engine, there's one thing I must mention is the first frame, I don't have any deformations because when I import the mesh, I want the initial shape to be like this because I still want to be able to blend out the smearing and that's why I, I need to have that first frame. So you'll see, starting from the next frame, we have the smearing. And then if we look at the last frame, you see it's it's blending nicely. So here it's kind of looping. So I will always loop between those frames, as you can tell. And then, yeah, this is basically, it needs that as a reference. I don't know if it would be possible if you like, Add in a rest position attribute is something I would have to try with, with VATS. I don't know how exactly that works. But anyways, yeah, so I import that. And then if I show you the material, 
it's pretty simple. I make sure that the color matches that of my hammer. I could also use a actual texture, but in our case, our game is, well, <laughs> just post-processing with basic colors, as you can tell. Yep. <laughs> so we don't need all that. Okay. And yeah, then like you can tell here, I blend it and then I offset that value a little bit. I kind of eyeballed it, which is not ideal, but you know, it, it was just a quick solution. But then anyways, here you can tell I'm using the particle color, so the alpha from zero to one. And basically if it's zero, I keep the actual vertex normal as was, and I basically don't have any world position offset. And then if it goes to one, I basically apply all the VAT deformations. And you can tell it here in my effect. So first of all, I'm using the infinite kill module. That's a module I created. There's a tutorial about that one. If you, you want to know more about it, it's, it's, it's very useful. So definitely check it out because when this effect should be deactivated, you don't want it to immediately kill, but you want it first to like blend out. And that's what this module is doing. So it, the, the effect is not killing, like you can tell after the, the lifetime has elapsed. Although this will basically track when there is a state change on the execution state, and then it will take that condition and then we'll start ticking a value. And you'll see that here in the, at this one. Yeah. And that one, you'll see that this is a value going from zero to one, but of course I had to one minus it. And then additionally, I also, based on age, particle age, I say have a value going from zero to one. So it's basically going up during 2.5 seconds. It goes from zero to one. So it's like slowly growing. As you can tell from the visual effect, it's slowly growing. And then when it's released, one second, you'll see, voila, it finishes nicely. So yeah, that's that's that. If you want to know more about this game we are creating, it's called Drone Tanks. Of course, this is all not final, but we have got a very, very promising project and I would strongly suggest to go uh, check it out. And of course, there are some other more cool content that I've created, such as my fire torch effect. Definitely interesting to go check it out as well. All right, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something awesome. Bye-bye.